guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that's amazing for, for creating different kinds of cuts into shapes inside of your models. So today's add-on is called Box Cutter, and I'm gonna give you an introduction of how to use this in order to start creating amazing shapes inside of Blender. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Box Cutter is a tool that's specifically made for creating cuts in different objects inside of Blender. And so you can find this on the Blender Market. I will link to this in the notes down below. You can either get Box Cutter by itself. This is a paid add-on. Um, you can either get Box Cutter by itself for $20, or you can get it bundled with Hard Ops, which is another modeling add-on um, as well for a little bit less. So you can get a little bit of savings by getting them both together. These are both really cool tools. I'm gonna to talk about hard ops in a future video. But for now, I wanna give you an introduction to Box Cutter. One thing I wanna note about Box Cutter is it has its own online manual. So it's got like a complete searchable manual in here that'll talk you through exactly what this tool can do. So if you ever get lost or you're looking for a little bit more instruction, that kind of thing, uh, you can check that out on this page. I will be linking to all of this in the notes below the video. And so once you get this add-on, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that it's enabled. So just go up to edit, preferences, and just make sure that box cutter has been installed. So you can just click the install button and install it if you haven't done that already. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna enable this add-on inside of Blender. And so once that's enabled, you can tap the in key. And then if you go into the box cutter settings, it's gonna give you instructions on what to do. And so the very first thing you need to do in order to get box cutter working is you need to type in Alt W. So Alt W is going to enable this tool, you can see how this gives you a number of additional tools at the top of the page, as well as a lot more options over here in the menu on the right hand side. And then if you wanna close this, all you have to do is hit the W key again. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna turn this back off. So if you ever wanna enable or disable box cutter, you can do that using Alt W and W. So when you type in Alt W, you can see how you're gonna get a number of different options in here of different things that you can do. So things like the different modes, shapes, other things like that. You can use this menu on the right hand side in order to do this. Notice that this is going to have a help section that will give you information about what you can do with the currently active tool. In addition, you can also tap the D key on your keyboard in order to open up a window in your screen that gives you most of the options that you have over here in the menu. So if you like working with a less cluttered workspace, you can just tap the D key in order to activate all of this. But the icons are gonna be the same. You can find everything in here um, in either place. All right, so basically what this tool does is it is designed for creating different cuts in objects. So at its simplest, if we tap the N key and go into box cutter, um, at its very simplest, if you select an object and then drag a box like this, you're gonna notice that this is gonna bring in a live box inside of your model. And so that box, once I let up on my mouse button, then I move my mouse is going to allow me to basically create a cut inside of an object. And notice how when we do this, this box is a certain color so this color is gonna indicate the mode that we have active because there's multiple different modes in here for different things that we can do. For now, let's focus on the cut tools. So notice how I haven't let up on my mouse button yet so I can actually move this wherever I want to. And then once I've created the cut that I want, I can click in order to finalize that cut. So basically what that did is that came in and that created a Boolean operator that's cutting this shape. And so what that means is that means that this has created a cut in here, but it hasn't actually applied it. And so what that means is that means if I was to tab into edit mode, notice how none of these cuts are going to show up because they're in here as modifiers. So the power of this is this gives you the ability to create and edit all of these different cuts. So what that allows you to do is that allows you to do all of this in a way that's adjustable. Meaning if you don't like the way this looks, you can go back and make changes to it. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. And so let's start by taking a look at some of the options that we have inside of this tool. And specifically, because you might run into some issues depending on your settings, I wanna start by actually focusing on the way that these cuts are brought into our model. So if you go down to the surface option, there's a few different options on here for the way that the cuts that you create are going to be aligned. So there's an option for align to surface. There's an option for align to view. 
There's an option for align to cursor, and there's an option for align to world. And we're gonna focus specifically at the moment for the object and the view. And so right now, notice that when I have this box selected, whenever I drag across a face like this, it's going to automatically align with whatever face my mouse is over. So if I click and drag a box right here, it's going to align it with this front face. If I click and drag a box up here, it's gonna align it to this top face. And notice how this is all live and these interact with each other. So the cuts will actually interact because they're live Booleans in here. But notice how we can use the align to surface in order to align this to different shapes. Alternatively, and let's jump over to one of our spheres here. Um, instead of doing that, if we want to, we could pick like a front view, like this one. So instead of aligning to a surface, because if we click and select this object and then try to draw a box based on our sphere right here, notice how this comes in at kind of a weird angle, um, which isn't necessarily what we want. What we could do instead is we could pick a straight on view, and then in our alignment, we could align this with our view rather than a surface. And so what that means is that means that now if I drag a box over this cube, instead of it trying to align with the surface my mouse is over, it's going to align with my camera view. So what that means is that means I can use this to quickly add a cut to this object. Notice how I can rotate out of this once I set my original shape, but notice how that is aligned with where my camera was when I first started using the tool. And so what that means is that means that not only can you make this align to certain shapes, it's also going to align to your camera view. One thing to note about this is the object that you have selected is important because this is applying Booleans. So for example, if you look at this right now, I have this sphere selected. Well, even if I was to come in here and select align with surface, if I was to try to draw a box over here aligned with my, uh, my box on the left hand side, notice how this isn't actually cutting this object. And the reason it's not cutting this object is because I didn't have this object selected, I had the sphere selected. So when you're selecting objects, what you're doing is you're telling it which object to apply your modifier to. So make sure that whatever you want to modify, you have the correct object selected so that you're not creating Booleans that don't actually do anything inside of this, uh, inside of this tool. And so now let's talk a little bit about the shapes options that you have in here. So we talked about how we can get this to align to your surfaces or your camera view. So you can also use the shapes function in order to adjust the kind of shapes that are being used as Booleans. So let's say for example, on this object that I wanted to cut a hole all the way across. So um, instead of using this box shape, which is what we have in here by default, what we could do is we could use this circle shape instead. And so with the circle shape, what that's gonna do is when I click and drag in here, and this aligns the face, notice how now, instead of creating a, a square, what this is doing is creating a circle. And so if I let up on this after I click and drag and then move my mouse, notice how this is coming in here and this is cutting a hole using that circular shape rather than the other shape. And so you can use this in order to create those circular shapes instead. Like this. So not only can you use these preset shapes, you can also come in here and draw an ingon. So what that means is that means, let's say you had a custom profile that you wanted to add to the front of your box. So let's say that we were to go to our front view so let's go to our front view right here and let's say we wanted to add a custom profile. Well, what we could do is we could go in here and we could select this ingon option. What the ingon option does is it allows you to actually draw a shape by clicking and dragging. So notice how I can click and drag and then let up on my mouse in order to start drawing an ingon. Well, now I can come in here and I can click to set multiple different points for a profile that I want to create. So then I can click the left, so then I can click the right mouse button, then kind of rotate out of this. And notice how in this situation, what this did is this gives me a pair of dots. Well, I can use those dots in order to extrude this out. So notice how as I do this, what this is doing is this is removing material based on that custom profile. So you can use this in order to create custom profiles in order to create different kinds of extrusions inside of Blender. And so one thing I wanna note while we're talking about this 
is um, not only when you have tools active, so let's go back to our box for a second. So not only can you click and drag in order to create this and then move your mouse, you can also tap the tab key with a tool active. And so what that does is that in, that puts you into this mode where you can adjust these dots. And what these dots do is these dots allow you to adjust the extrusion of your shape live by clicking and dragging them. So notice how I can set how far this is extruding um, by clicking and dragging those dots. And notice how another thing that this does is this also lets me adjust the bevel of this shape. So I can click and drag on this and this allows me to bevel off the edges of the uh, cut that I'm creating. We'll talk more about you doing this with a keyboard shortcut in a second, but notice how what this does is this allows me to live adjust this. So if you want more control over what you're doing, then um, tap the tab key with the tool active and that's gonna allow you to come in here and adjust these cuts just like this. Notice how you can also use like the move tool, for example. So if I tap the G key, I can actually move this around. You can also scale and rotate it as well. So these are actually live objects inside of a blender that you can adjust. So you can use this to adjust these so that you can get the result that you're looking for. And so let's talk a little bit about the modes as well. So we've talked about the first mode, which is the cut mode. That one's pretty self-explanatory. What it does is it just removes material. So cut mode is basically going to cut material out of your object. So the second option in here puts you in slice mode. And what this is going to do is this is going to slice this using a Boolean modifier. So what that does is that creates a slice inside of your, um, inside of your shape using a Boolean modifier. What that means is that means that you can adjust this slice um, using tools like the scale tool or whatever. So, but that one, notice how that's being done with a Boolean, meaning if I was to tab into the shape, none of that's actually in here. Which So this is gonna slice our mesh using the Boolean modifier. This third option is really interesting to me. It's the inset tool. So the inset tool is interesting to me because that actually creates an inset inside of your shape. So notice how what this is doing is this is basically insetting this in. So instead of doing that with the slice modifier, this one kind of does this automatically in here. And one thing to note about that is when you're doing this, you can adjust it using these keyboard shortcuts. So if you tap the T key, notice how what this is gonna do is this is gonna adjust the size of the, um, it's going to adjust the size of the solidify that's created in this intersection. So you can see how we can use this in order to make an adjustable cut inside of this object. And all of these keyboard shortcuts are active while you're doing this, meaning I can tap the G key to move things around. I can tap the B key to create a bevel. Um, all of these things that this is showing, I can create a contour bevel. All of the things that are shown over here in this menu are live whenever you're creating these tools. So notice I can scroll up in order to add an additional number of cuts into this object really quickly as well. So the join function is gonna allow you to add geometry. So notice how I can use this to add a shape to this face if I wanna do that. So the knife tool is actually going to cut, um, it's more of a destructive modifier. So if you use this one, for example, in your shape like this, and then tab into edit mode. Notice how this actually adjusted your geometry in here. So what that's done is that's actually cut this geometry and actually made a change to your geometry. So if you wanna come in here and actually use the knife tool in a destructive fashion, you can do that. Just note that you can't come back and make this change later um, if you wanna adjust anything in here. So the extract mode can theoretically pull out a custom mesh as a custom cutter, meaning you can use this in order to pull something out that you had in here and reuse a cut if you wanna do that. Um, the last option in here is make. That just allows you to create shapes. There's nothing special about it. It's just used for general shape creation. So in addition, there are also custom operations that you can use. So right now we have this set to none. And what this does is this basically just creates a single cut in here, but these operations allow you to do multiple different things. So let's say for example, that we wanted to cut a sphere into this object. And we need to make sure we have cut mode selected. 
So if you single tap the V key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna put you in array mode. What array mode is gonna do is that's gonna allow you to copy or that's going to allow you to create multiple different, um, it, it's going to basically repeat the operation multiple different times. So you can see how I can adjust that spacing by moving my mouse. And I can adjust this by uh, using the scroll wheel as well, scrolling up and down. So not only if you tap the V key once, does this put you in um, linear array mode? If you tap it again, it'll put you in circular array mode. So or radial array mode. Basically what that means is that means this will create an array in a circle. So, and notice how this is all very adjustable, meaning I can tap the S key in order to adjust the size. And then I can go back and tap the V key in order to go back into array mode. So you can adjust all of this live as you're working. So I really like the bevel modifier because what the bevel modifier does is when you use this, so if you were to come in here and draw a shape like this, um, the bevel modifier is gonna bevel this off. And you can actually um, activate that by clicking on the little icon when you first start. You can also tap the uh, B key in order to adjust the bevel of your shape. So you can use this to quickly add a beveled cut into your shape as well. And then once you're done with that, and notice how I can scroll my mouse wheel up in order to add edges to the bevel. But once I'm done, I can just click in order to set that. And notice how it gives me the little tabs in here so that I can come back and adjust this later if I want to. And then finally, we've got the mirror tool. And so the mirror tool is going to allow you to create multiple mirrored cuts across an axis. And so if you look at this, what this is doing is this is currently mirroring across an axis. Notice how you can tap the number keys in order to adjust the axis that this mirrors along. So this is mirroring across the object axis, but you can see how you can use this to create multiple cuts really easily. And just tap those one, two, and three keys in order to adjust the axes that this is mirroring across. So you can see how you can use this in order to add multiple cuts to an object really easily. And then one last thing about this tool that uh, I almost forgot to talk about, but it's really powerful, is notice how you can actually adjust the tools that are in here by going up into your collections and looking for the cutters. And so the cutters is where this stores all of the Boolean cutters that are in here. Well, notice how when I turn this on, I can actually see that in here. And I can select it and I can adjust it. So I can move it around, um, I can scale it, so I can scale it on the X or Y axis. These are all adjustable after the fact, meaning you can come in here and you can make changes to these as you want to. So if you wanna move and adjust your cutters around, you can do that by turning on the cutters and just editing them like you would any other object inside of Blender. So that's where I'm going to end this video. This is another example of one of those tools that has so many features. It's hard to do an intro video on because there's so much to talk about. But hopefully I give you a good overview of what this tool can do. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything you'd like me to cover more in depth. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.